book of Acts, chapter 20. Your theme was sent to me. And we're going to do what the Lord has given me to do in this text. Acts, the 20th chapter, we're going to push back and drop a little further than you did. We want to look at verses 21 through 32. The 20th chapter of Acts. A most difficult place in Scripture for the church. King James Version of the Bible records it thusly, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God All right. and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace of God. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Oh, praise his holy name. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Your Verse. Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Watch the text. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Yeah, yeah. Oh, praise God. We close on verse 32. He says, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able, praise God, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So read it, the word of God. Gracious God, our Father, we stand here now in this weakened vessel. Strengthen us for the purpose and take us through this process that we may proclaim the unsearchable truths of your word. Open this writ up to me, God, in ways it has never been opened. Open up the hearts of these, your people, to hear what thus saith the Lord. Lord, you know what every man, woman, boy, and girl stands in need of. 
Lord, we pray that there is a gateway through our ears yes, that will deposit your word in our heart. Lord, we pray that you would give us something to touch the hearts that they may feel. Give them something to move in their heads that they may ponder. But assign to every man something to his hands that he is charged to do when they leave here. We stand to declare that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God is eternal and everlasting. Amen. We again thank you, Dr. Holland. It's truthfully been a long time. I thank God for my wife being here with me. She is a part of me that I didn't know was missing until God filled the gap. Amen. Didn't know how wonderful it would be to be married until God gave me a wife. And I thank God for her. Amen. I thank God for Zion Hill. Those of you who are here, I thank Amen. you for being here. To our musician, Minister Terry Brown, God bless you. Amen. It is so different being here. We have deposited some of the most beautiful members since we began this engagement. Amen. There are members of this family that they are waiting now for the trump to blow. Amen. But we thank God that we're going to do what he has assigned us yeah. to make it a requirement and responsibility that these relationships that we have with God be restored. Right. I wish he was with me in here. This is a pastor's appreciation, am I right? Okay, so there need to be pastoral communication. Uh, whether you realize it or not, our churches are under attack. And, and the easiest way to attack the church is put shackles on the pastor. Y'all ain't praying with me up in here. But, but I know it to be true. I, 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 I've been around enough churches. And, and when I was the president of the Congress, I, I, I witnessed things that just weren't biblical. All right. All right. All right. Under the guise of keeping it church. I ain't playing with y'all today. I'm on my way back to vacation. Uh, but, but there are some problems going on. And in the church, we need to, if we're going to address them, we must first acknowledge them. That they are real, real, and even more real. And as we move through this strange time, Paul is talking to a church that's in the midst of some strange time. And right now, every time you stand, Pastor, mount this sacred death, you are preaching to people whether they acknowledge it or not. They are in the midst of some strange time. Uh, 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 what I want you to understand is that we have a real adversary. And, and, and he is busy when we're slowful. He, he is more active when you're passive. Go ahead, sir. I How many times have we heard uh, uh, somebody at the church griping and complaining while sitting and not serving? I'm by myself up in here. Deacon, if I gotta run, Bishop Dickerson will help me to get out of here. Because I came to tell the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but. A, a, a few years ago while, while working with, with the coalition of churches. I, I watched a fist fight break out. At a church. Over someone sitting in a reserved pew. I heard of one church that literally split over the color of song books. There's problems in the church. Paul, 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 I'm glad that Paul was willing to address the fact there are problems. While we hear things like that and say, oh, that's so foolish. 
What is the last church fight you got in? And what was it about? Some, 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 you, you may feel like that that's terrible and that will never happen in my church. And, and that's the, 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 where the problem is. We have pronoun problems in the church. If I was to run back and get Matthew, the 16th chapter, you would, it would define that this ain't your church, my church, or our church. He said it's his church. The reason the problems come up is because folk are taking ownership when they should be required for stewardship. I'm by myself up in here. Uh, he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the very gates of hell shall not prevail. See, your church, a deacon will prevail. A choir member might prevail. A old misguided preacher might prevail. But I'm glad that Paul, Paul came with the conviction of Christ. He said, I preach nothing except Christ. him crucified. He said, I come not with the excellency of speech nor the wisdom of man. We have jettisoned the one who's able to hold us together. Uh, now, now I, 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 don't, I don't want to bother you. I got way too much sermon for the time allotted. But, 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 but stay tuned. They told me that Dr. Irving <laughs> We'll be here next week. Anything I miss, he's gathering it up right now. God has a preacher on the way, so all I have to do is just do like John, just tell you I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But see, John, 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 the record bears that John had something that we didn't have. John had personal evidentiary proof of who he was. Even though you might not think so if you go check John when he was incarcerated. But John, 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 can I tell you three times that he knew who he was? I will tell you in the womb, he said, I knew him because when he came into my presence, I moved. I just want to know, do you move at the presence of the master still? Oh, and then he says, he said, I also knew him in the wilderness. I ain't got no help up in here. Somebody, you in the wilderness right now. And you ought to know the master in your wilderness. And if you don't know him there, John said he will meet you by the water side. I ain't got no help. Let me press on. Uh, 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 Paul, Paul's intention in preaching these words of warning to the church at Ephesus, he wants them to know that the trouble can be avoided and the church can dwell in unity and blessing if they are willing to listen. This great apostle shares words that are more relevant today than any other time in church history. We are watching, I don't have to tell you, so many things occur that sometimes I have to wonder, was that church? When you go in and Christ is not welcome, it ain't church. Uh, when he was welcomed in the school, there was peace in the school. <laughs> when he was welcomed in the home, there was peace in the home. I'm getting ready to mess you up. When he was welcomed in the church, there was power in the church. You, you, you sent me this text and I'm going to deal with it and I'm out of here. Watch this. You sent me Acts, the 20th chapter, you dropped too far down in the text for me. I got to step up a little bit. And then you sent me something that says, our pastor still proclaiming God's word. And I, and, and I, 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 I have a retort for you with your good writing self. Uh, here's my question to this committee. How is your pastor still Proclaiming God's word. How in the midst of all this going on, more members leaving than coming? 
How is he still, still. proclaiming God's word? With folks rolling their eyes when the word goes out. Wiggling their necks at the preacher. How is he still proclaiming God's word? Phony with our feet leaving the church, tying up our purses and pocketbooks, thinking we can starve the Lord's church. How is he still proclaiming God's word? Well, well, let me see if I can help you. I got five things that I pulled out the text. And if you put them in your pocket, you can help your pastor in the future. The, the first thing when I looked in the text, verses 18 to 23, it shows me the way of the minister. The way of the minister. I'm confident that each of us have seen pastor, been in some of us multiple pastoral relationship, and, and, and sometimes we say, how does he keep protected the Lord's flock? I, I want to tell you that most pastors have more sheep bites than wolf bites. Most pastors have been nicked and nagged by the sheep while we stand on God for the wolf. We've been attacked by some sheep. Well, they look like sheep. But woe unto you, for the man is coming who says, I know the difference. He said, I'll put the sheep on the right side. But oh, I'm going to put some goats on the left side. The way of the minister, he works tirelessly for sheep that are sometimes goats. Over the past 18 months, I've seen pastors work harder than we've ever worked in our life. Trying to figure out in advanced ages how to work this new age technology. I thank God for you, Brother Tate. Brother Tate said, Pastor, you done passed me. I said, I had to. Because there's a responsibility for me to look for lost sheep. Some are lost in their living rooms with their pajamas on during the worship hour, during the Bible study hour. It's, it's more comfortable at home, Reverend. The way of the minister. This pandemic has forced pastors to become more innovative. It caused us to stretch and become more useful. We had to come outside of these sacred walls. Uh, can I tell you something? I worked with some evangelical brethren who have 5,000. We went to do a service for them. They have gymnasiums and all the spreads over acres and acres. And when I walked in there, God said, when, they, when I shut them down, I shut them all down. He said, I shut big ones down and little ones down. He said, I just wanted to see who was real. The way of the minister. Paul looks at this from a review of view and the preview. The way of the minister, the behavior of the minister. Paul first addresses the conduct in the past. He says, and when they were come to him, past him, he said unto them, ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I've been with you all season. Paul was saying that my conduct is one of commitment. Paul says my conduct is one of consistency. Paul says my conduct is never one of being comfortable or casual. I ain't got no help up in here. If I'm talking about your pastor, you can at least say amen up in this house. Uh, he says the conduct in the past. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears. This addresses the hurt that comes from serving those who don't want service. Watching folk leave the church, abandon responsibility, 
He says that uh, with tears and temptation because he said, sometime I just want to quit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sometime I want to find Jeremiah, the 20th chapter. Yeah. But God got me in Acts in 20. He says, I want to hang this thing up. My pastor told me something before I became a pastor. He said, you sure you want to do this, son? He says, is there anything else in the church you can do? He says, because you're married, right? I said, yes, sir, you know I am, pastor. He says, it's difficult to get your wife to pray for your girlfriend. Am I up here by myself? The way some of you get on the pastor's nerves. The wife wants to turn off the cell phone. Raise your hand, Sister Hodge. Don't be ashamed. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But God has made a sacred call for service. That even when I don't want to, I got a bad case of can't help myself. The conduct Paul said, I had temptation would befell me lying in wait of the Jews. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly from house to house. Paul said, I did the work of an evangelist. That, 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 that was his review. Then his present view in verse 22 said, and now, somebody say, now he is present. He says, and now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me. There. He says, there may be some problems as we move into this new behavior of the church. This behavior that seems strange and difficult. This behavior of, 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 of how happy we are that pastor is driving around dropping off the Lord's Supper oh, to folk who didn't even come sometime to get it before pandemic. Hello, two people. Right, sir. Right, sir. We want to brag about what pastor does, but where is Aaron? And where is her? Who's holding up pastor's arm? Who's going to replace him when he gets tired? His first ministry is looking good and looking at me. Can't none of y'all replace Leroy to Deborah. Get mad if you want to. I'm going home. I'm going to eat the food they give me and I'm getting in the bed. His present charge is similar to what's found in Micah 6 and 8. He that showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly oh, with thy God. Leroy Holland. I found evidence and a preponderance thereof to find you guilty of loving God's sheep. I found you guilty of walking worthy in the vocation to which God has called. Then Paul, Paul, Paul in verse 23, what's going on? Paul's crisis in prophecy. See, see, sometimes when we realize what God has assigned to us, when we become reticent and we have trepidations about going forth, Paul, what is he saying? He says, accept the Holy Ghost witness in every city, saying that the bonds and afflictions abide me. Paul said, I got some trouble down the road. Bishop, we're going to have trouble down the road. Yes, I, I, I stand to say, uh, not as a prophet, but just as a casual observer, that it's going to get worse. Come here, big mama, before it get better. Uh, there are some problems we have not even seen that are laying await for the way 
of the minister, his action. It leads me to verse 24, and it talks about the will of the minister. The way of the minister, his action. Verse 24, the will of the minister. But none of these things move me. Neither count I myself dear unto myself. Oh, Lord, I wish they wouldn't have put that one in there. So that I might fit. Oh, I like this for Finish my course. He said with y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, 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 the reason here is by of a pure motive. So see, the will of the minister must be by reason of a pure motive. But none of these things move me, neither count I myself dear unto myself. Paul knew never to place himself above the ministry of God. That there will always be some misery assigned to every ministry. Right. Choir members, if you want to sing and not go through, you're just making noise. Deacons, you can't serve. Wait for the good part. Ushers, you'll get tired on the door if you won't go through the misery of service with a pure motive. And then and then he says not only a pure motive, he said it will lead to perfect ministry so that I might finish my course. Yeah. The perfection isn't cheating on somebody else's test. Yeah. The perfection is mature enough to handle what God has assigned to you. Hello, somebody. You can't stay up all night and come and worship in the morning. The perfecting of the ministry, finishing my course with joy. With joy. Can I tell you the acronym that I believe Paul wants me to insert here for joy? Yeah. Jesus, only you. Finishing my course with Jesus, only you. We have to understand that there's only one who holds the reward for the church. Pastor Holland, it's not you. Bishop Dickerson, it ain't you. And, I, and, and, and they been let me know it wasn't me. And I'm all right with that. Uh, but, but, but it's a perfecting of the ministry. Paul would show up in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 and, and he says this. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. But preacher, you hear me? Don't worry about what the doctors say. God has the last say so to this stuff. When I am in my weakness, he says his strength is made perfect. Most gladly, therefore, I'd rather glory in infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Pure motives lead to perfect ministry. But, 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 but watch that. But that's not where he stopped because he shows up and said, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of grace. Pure motives, perfect ministry lead to a powerful message. 1 Corinthians 1 and 18. He says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us. And I don't know who us is, but that's the reason he put us at the end of his name. Jesus knows who that us is. He says, but unto us which are saved, it is the power. Huh? The power. Say it with me. Say power. power. Quit sitting in church and not know you have power. power. It is the power of God. Paul. 
pushes the envelope further in 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. And he says, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing word of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. When your pastor stands, he stands with power. The way of the minister, the will of the minister. He, he, he hears the one I want you to hear me. The warning to the ministry. He says, take heed therefore, you gave this to me, don't look at me. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all. That word in the Greek is P-O-S, it's pos, it means a continuation. He says all the flock, present flock, past flock, and future flock. He's saying that we have a responsibility. Quit guarding something that ain't yours. Blocking folk out of church ministry because you're afraid they're going to do it better. We should be excited. I've challenged mine here. Go find your replacement before God moves you. I'm looking for the next pastor. Praying for him. He may be selling meth, smoking meth. He may be a pimp, but I'm praying for him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You ain't always been in church at on a Sunday, God suspended football so some of y'all would pay attention to him. He done moved the Raiders three times. And y'all will get on a plane and follow him anyway. And won't come to church if it's too hot, too cold, too windy, or if the preacher preach too long. The warning to the ministry. The warning to the ministry. I ain't gonna read it all, but 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 but, but watch this. We have a responsibility, brother Ezekiel, in the third chapter when God called him Son of Man, dropped off to him a great responsibility. He says, Son of Man, when you see them in their sin. And you warn them not. They shall die in their sin. But their blood. It's too many preachers with blood on their hands. You have a pastor that doesn't have blood on his hand. I, 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 I know preachers that will marry two men. And counsel two women. Will advise folk where and how to have abortions. Blood dripping from the pulpit. The only blood that the church needs is the blood of the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. Son of man, I made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. Pastor stands here preaching to save your life. I got to press on. Paul is saying, Holland, be on the lookout. Paul is saying, prepare Holland for the fight of your life. The apostle Peter will let us know in 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom uh, he may devour. The way of the minister, the will of the minister, the warning to the ministry. Because, well, why is there a warning? Because in verse 29 he said, the warfare in the ministry. 
there's a warfare in the ministry. I'll stand here till you admit that you fought with somebody in church. I'm talking to all of us. Hello, two people. The warfare in the ministry. Well, maybe you did, but Paul told me to tell you this anyway. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. And he says, not sparing the flock. You, you, you better pay attention because the warning is about warfare. Yeah. The, the, there, there are some enemies around. Uh, Paul speaks of wolves which come in and try to devour the flock. Jude would let us know in the third verse, dear friend, although I was very eager to write to you about salvation, we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend to fight for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. Verse 4 says in the New Living Translation, for certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long before have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Not only are there enemies around us, he said there's enemies among us. Hello, somebody. There are enemies among us. When you hear the conversation of your confidant and they're nipping on the heels of your pastor, when they're uh, not willing to obey the holy rich, the enemies are among us. I heard you, I heard you, I heard you way over there in the back in the balcony. You said, I don't see that, it's in verse 30. He says, also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. I told somebody there are many pastors, not M-A-N-Y, M-I-N-I, miniature pastors in the pews. You, I, I recognize them when I see them. They the ones that turn up their nose when the word is gone. Papa said when you throw a rock in a pack of dogs, the only one that howl is the one you hit. Some folks rush out of church because that word will either draw you or drive you. There are some folk I'm not going to look for anymore. You can call them, you can text them, or tell them to watch the video and I'm telling them. There are some folk that God meant to leave. Paul warned Ephesus that there would arise people from within their own ranks whose job is to destroy the church. People come into the ministry biblically like disciples for three reasons. They come for a reason. And we see that with the disciples of Christ. John, James, Matthew, they had reasons. Even Timothy had a reason to show us that if we're not careful, we would doubt Christ. And then there were some that came for a season. Thaddeus and Bartholomew, you don't hear nothing about. They had a season. But then the greatest disciple of them all, he came not for a reason, not for a season, he came for treason. 
It was his treasonous act that gave us access. There are some enemies among us. I heard a story about a pastor, a great pastor. He would take his children to church, take them to Bible study, take them to the convention. And he knew I, this is what I need to do. And one day he came home. They had invited over some of their friends and he heard some rumbling and tussling upstairs. He ran up the stairs and he opened up the door. He said, what y'all doing? They said, playing church. Some folk learn to fight from being at church. Jesus warns us in John the 10th chapter when he declares himself the good shepherd. So Holland keeps showing the sheep. John 10 and 10 says, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But thanks be to our God for Jesus, the great shepherd prophet. I am come that they may have life and have life more abundant. Yeah. Pastor Holland, please remember the way of the minister, uh -huh. the will of the minister. Well. Pastor Holland, do all you can to stand behind this sacred desk and declare the warning to the minister. Yeah. And oh yes, unfortunately, we have an adversary, the devil who wages warfare in the ministry. But, 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 because John 3.16, you have a way out. Yeah, because my Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I ain't got nothing better than that. That whosoever would should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's okay to know the way of the ministry, the will of the ministry, the warning from the ministry. You do know that we have warfare in the ministry, but thank God for my fifth point, and I'm out of here. Get my bag ready. I'm out of here. And that's the winning in the ministry. Paul says, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I want you to understand as I take my seat, I don't have nothing left, my little well is dry. I thank God for the invite. But first, I want to tell you, St. Corinthians 10 and 3 says, for we walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Paul would leave final instructions and I'm gone. Voices you can get up. I shall. Where? Paul says this in me. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. He says, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them that love his appearing. Finally, Pastor, we have a winning ministry. It's dependent on God, because when man was lost, he walked through 40 and two generations parked himself in the womb of a virgin, was seen to do many infallible works. But one Friday, they stretched him wide and they hung him high. 
He dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders. For you and I, he died. But he didn't stay dead. Because early Sunday morning, he got up with all power. And that power is available to you right here, right now. That same God who got up. In the book of Acts, it said that he stepped on a cloud elevator, ascended to be at the right hand of the Father. Two men in white apparel stood and said, Why ye men of Galilee gaze ye therefore into the sky? The same Jesus is coming back. So, brother pastor, keep working until you hear your master say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. God bless you. Discipleship, the word has gone out.